Hello, this is chapter 18 of the Top Hat Organic Chemistry book, second edition. So this one we're going to be talking about benzene and aromatic compounds. Right, so, with that, so benzene, we, we're going to be seeing this um, a lot. It has some very unique properties to it. And actually in the, the 1800s and, and early 1900s, there was a huge debate on um, the actual structure of benzene because um, they knew what the formula was, but they didn't know how the the atoms were arranged in space, and it was it was quite contentious. With it. But uh, we're going to be talking about these because um, benzene um, forms a lot of what we call aromatic compounds, um, and for aromatic, the uh, um, the reason why they use that is because you know if you think of air, you know things that have an aroma to them. You know, so, so if you look at all of these different compounds, they have very very pleasant, generally have very pleasant scents to them. Um, some of that, and they all contain a, a benzene. Okay. Now, for naming comments, we're not going to necessarily get into these. Um, I've had a few videos w with previous textbooks where I where I go into here. But one of the things you're going to want to do is is to um, know these base names. Okay. Um, for that, and for that, you're going to have. Um, you're going to be able to reference from that. So toluene. Now, one of the things with toluene is it only has one methyl group on it. So this is toluene. If it's got other methyl groups, it's called something else. Phenol has the OH hanging off of it. Aniline has an amine. It doesn't necessarily have to have a um, what's that? Hydrogens here. It can have other things, um, other groups hanging off. But it needs to have the nitrogen right next to the to the, um, to the benzene ring. Benzaldehyde here with the, the, the aldehyde on here. Benzene sulfonic acid, right? So that, and so this would be, if you were to write it out, it would be, oops, and then OH. That's what it would look like. Benzoic acid, so we've got the, uh, the benzene here, or the carboxylic acid here. Acetophenone, so this is an acetyl group here. Um, and so essentially what you have is you'll have a benzene on one side of the ketone and a and a methyl group on the other. The other one is anisole, and that one you've got the um, O methyl hanging off of here. So, for this, so you can also have what's called benzophenone um, over here. It's a ketone, but you have benzene, benzene on both sides. Here, with acetophenone, you've got to have a methyl on one side and a benzene on the other. So, you want to know these sort of base names. Okay? Now, you can have benzene as a side chain. Okay, so if it's directly hanging off of the main chain and it's considered a side chain, then its name is actually phenyl. It should actually be benzyl, right? Because methyl, um, because of the normal um, sort of naming rules. The problem is benzyl um, was already taken. Um, some of that. So what it means is is that between the main chain and the benzene, there's a CH2. There's a CH2 that shows up between it. And that's a benzyl group. Here, the main chain would be this this sugar molecule here. Okay, it turns out that benzyl was named before they realized there was that CH2 because it was they were when they were um, trying to get these things, um, isolate these compounds. It was from the soot left behind from gas lamps in in London streets. Um, for that, and they didn't realize that there was a CH2, but then they named it before they understood what it was, and then they never got around to cha um, changing it back. But but here we have a, a phenyl group would be directly on the, the main chain, and the benzyl is here. Now you may have seen phenyl um, in biology. Right? There's the the um, what is it? The the amino acid phenylalanine. Well, if you've got If you have alanine, right, that's this. If you have phenylalanine, right, so this is alanine. If you have phenylalanine, what you have is alanine with essentially, that's alanine with a benzene hanging off of it. Or in other words, a phenyl. That's phenylalanine. Alanine. That's the amino acid. So that's where that comes from. That's where it comes from. Now, one of the things with with number uh, with naming of benzene compounds is if you have um, 
say two things hanging off of it. You can actually use this orthometa para position, um, orthometa orientation. Okay, so if you are the uh, and it's relative to the placement of the of the reference functional group. So if you come back here, it would be referenced to. So if you were talking about phenol, it would be referenced towards where the OH is, or if you have an alanine, uh, aniline, it's where that nitrogen is, or benzaldehyde, it would be this carbon here where it's the the um, aldehyde is hanging off of. So it's relative to that. So if you're right next door and in the neighbor, um, immediately adjacent to it, if the other group is, is right here, we call that the ortho orientation. If it's two away, it's the meta. And if it's across from it, it's the para. So if we're going to take this to be the, this carbon here to be the reference, right, the, um, the other chlorine is, is one away. It's, it's adjacent to it. So that would mean that this would be an ortho orientation. If we're going to take this methyl group to be the um, um, to be the base, right? So the the other methyl group is two away, right? So that one, two, three, two away. So this would be a meta um, or um, configuration, right? So two benzenes actually is a xylene, is called a xylene. Uh, that so this is met this is considered meta xylene. And if for pair, you know, so this is the reference point here from from the base structure for the benzaldehyde. Since it's across from it, then it's um, considered the chlorine. This is the pair configuration here. And it doesn't necessarily, you know, it doesn't have to be from the top. It needs to be just wherever the base structure is. Okay. So if we had, um, if I had written, right, the um, benzoic acid, and I would have said, right. So uh, you know, let's put a um, let's put a chlorine here. This would be right, so he, the base structure would be the one in the red. So even though it's kind of facing, it was at four o'clock here. Right, the chlorine is is two away, so this would be meta. The meta configuration. Now for xylenes, it's there's actually two two benzenes on or two methyls on the benzene. Okay, no other nothing else. Um, present on there, and so you can have orthobenzene where you've got the two right next to each other. You can have meta um, xylene where there's you know this two away, or if they're across from each other, it's considered para xylene. Okay. Now, one of the things with reactivity with with benzene is that it can be significantly less reactive than alkenes. Okay, so with that, so if you tried these reactions. They basically wouldn't work. Um, that the uh, this would work. This could work if you if you really forced it. Okay, to, to do the hydrogenation. Okay. The reason for that is because um, and so typically what happens. I should before we get into that. Um, typically what happens is we have a substitution. So we're going to take you know there is an H here. We're going to sub swap out the um, this hydrogen for a bromine. Okay, we're not going to do. You know, if this was an alkene, we would just do a, a nice little addition, you know, adding BRBR BR across it. That's not going to happen with benzene. The best you can do is to get a, is to get a substitution on there. Okay. The reason for that is because of, of the resonance. It wants to, resonance provides a massive amount of stability um, to, to the overall system. Okay, so we need to maintain that. When you come back to this, right, this is no longer aromatic. This is no longer completely conjugated all the way around the ring. Okay. So, with that, when you get to when you get to this, okay. now just as a just as a reminder, these are not just different orientate. You know, these are not these are just simply different resonant structures of the same the same molecule. Okay, it's not it's technically not bouncing between you know this configuration and this configuration. So, these are not necessarily different molecules. They're just different resonance structures of the same. Okay, what we should really think about is is this resonance hybrid where it's really smeared. The, these electrons are smeared all the way around um, the ring, and so essentially every bond here is a one and a half carbon-carbon um, bond. So, but this is hard to visualize when we're talking about reactions, and so we're going to be 
you know using these the configurations of it but, but in reality it's this okay one of the things that makes this unique is right is that each one of these carbons is sp2 hybrid so the third p orbital is not is unchanged okay and so they are all um, oriented in the same orient you know, oriented the, uh, next to each other okay and so what can happen is their electron cloud can smear all the way around okay so an electron here can go whirling all around and not have to stop not have to stop turn around and come back or stop turn around and like that okay and quantum mechanics would pre this is what quantum mechanics would be is that things would things are smearing all around and so it's not, again, it's not these three alkene bonds. It's this specialized sort of benzene structure where it's, you have a ring and you're alternating double, double, single, double, single, double, all the way around. Okay. Now, the reason for the stability and the different reactivity is, is what's called aromaticity. Okay. And essentially, if it's aromatic, okay, is that it's going to behave a lot like benzene okay so about that so if it's anti-aromatic it behaves like an alkene it, but really it should uh, but looks like benzene non-aromatic means it's just um it, there's there's things that make it not look like um the, uh, like a benzene, nor is there, um, and it has a reactivity of just regular alkene. Okay, so generally, what we're looking for is it if it's aromatic, is are there available p orbitals on every member of the ring? So, so this really only happens with a ring. Okay, now you can have other chains hanging off of it, but it has to, the main core of, of the aromatic portion of the molecule needs to be a ring, and you need. You know if there's a p orbital because if it is if it's part of a uh, pi system, if there's a lone pair or if there's a charged and or if there's a, a charge on the atom, if we satisfy at least one of those one of these conditions, okay, on every member of that ring, then it has the potential of being aromatic. Okay, the structure does need to be flat, although that's a little bit more difficult to, to determine. Um, you know when we're drawing it but the big thing is it um, so the big ones are, are really this one here and this one here okay is the fact that it, it contains the correct number of, of electrons in the p orbitals and these are what are called the Huckel numbers okay it turns out Huckel realized that um, you need only some of these systems can be um, Aromatic. So even though this is a big ring and it's got alternating double and single bonds, okay, it turns out it's not aromatic because what, what we're going to do is we're going to look at these numbers here, okay, and you can look at the, the, there's a way of, of figuring this out, but um, but it's actually really easy to, to just determine, okay, because we know that um, what we're doing is we're looking like benzene, like benzene. And so if you count up the total number of pi electrons here, so 2, 4, 6, okay, we know that 6 is going to be an aromatic compound, right? So each one of these carbons has, is part of a double bond, right? So the electrons can go all the way around. Um, like that. And so we know that six, having 6 um, pi electrons in a ring is going to make it aromatic, okay? And then it all flips back and forth between anti-aromatic and the uh, aromatic and anti-aromatic by adding, by skipping to two. So 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. But then it also goes backwards too, is there 4 and 2. So it goes back and forth. If you remember that 6 is aromatic, then you can figure out all the other ones. Okay. Now for this one, right, so everybody is part of a pi bond. You, that, and so, so we've satisfied that one. So if we start counting these up, so, so two, four, and it doesn't matter if it's above, um, if the double bond is above or, or below, um, you know, sort of the sigma bond here, that doesn't matter. That's just a quirk of, of chem draw. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 
14, 16, 18, 20. Okay, so there's 20 p um, pi electrons around here. Okay, so, so Huckel would say, no, nah, it's anti-aromatic. And if you were to look at this, essentially the, the bonds, I think it, this structure is, is kinked. It's not completely flat, okay, because it, it's anti-aromatic. Now, you can have this multiple, you can actually have multiple rings in an aromatic um, compounds. okay? Now, if they are fused like this between just one bond, okay, what's going to happen is these, so something like biphenyl, because okay, there's two phenyl groups here, they're going to act like two separate benzene rings, right? Because you can get some free rotation around there. So these guys... This p orbital here isn't necessarily aligned with this p orbital here. It doesn't have to be because it's at least oriented like this. If it's fused at two points here, then this thing is is completely flat. Okay, or you know, then it can't rotate, and so these p orbitals are going to um, extend all the way around here. Okay, so same thing with this one. So if you have a, a, a polycyclic where you've got fusing it at two carbons, okay, then it's definitely going to be flat because you can't get any rotation. Now, heterocyclic compounds. Okay, so these are um, rings that have um, non-carbons in them. Okay, and typically it's going to be nitrogen, oxygen, sulfur. Those are the big. Those are the big ones. I'm sure you can have other ones, but those are the main three. They're going to have, they are going to have um, lone pairs on them. Okay. Now the trick with this is that you get such a boost in stability with these, um, with having aromaticity, right? Being aromatic. Okay. That what the heteratom can do is it can move those lone pairs in and out so that it can be aromatic. It can kind of hide those. Don't look at these two, just look at the other ones, right? So if we look at pyridine here, so we've got two, four, six, right? And then you say, oh, and there's an eight. Well, what it can do is it can move those p orbitals to be 90 degrees, so out of the, the plane of these things, and so they, they can make them invisible. The nitrogen can make them invisible, and so voila, we have our our um, aromatic system because we've got six p electrons around here and then these two which we're hiding same same goes with this one so two four six oh now we need them in order to in order to get our um, six pi electrons right so two four six now we can put it in there we can move them in so that we can count them okay and if you look at something like this so this furan ring so two four oh we only need one of these sets of lone pairs okay so we're going to count one of these and the other one we're not going to okay so two four you know two four ah, dry it up here so you can see it right right so what we're going to do is we're going to count these two four six and then we're just going to say hide these so same way over here. So we so generally, if you have a, a, a heteroatom in there, it's going to do what it can to to make become aromatic. Okay. Now with carbons, if you have a a a, um, a lone pair on a carbon, you have to count it no matter what. Okay. There's no sometimes count it, sometimes don't. That's only for heteroatoms. For carbons, you have to count them. Okay. So you can you can put a charge on here. Okay, and so for here, right, so this, because it has two electrons, on, on, has a lone pair, we're going to count those as two, four, six, like that. So that's aromatic, right? Here, it's two, four, six. And so this here, this has a charge on it. So it has a free p orbital, but it doesn't have anything in it. And so this is essentially a zero that you would, um, that you would add in. Right? Because it doesn't have the extra electrons, right? So by that, so you got two, four, six. Things can go all the way around, and so this is aromatic. You can actually buy salts of this compound. One of the crazier sort of carbon um, 
carbocations out there because it's really stable. Okay. Now for here, right? Again, you're going to have to count these. So it's two, four. Okay. So these are the four is, makes it anti-aromatic. The same thing here. So two, four, right? And again, that's that's essentially zero. So so these are anti-aromatic. Right, because again, this, this ends up being a zero when we're counting because there's no extra electrons. So is it aromatic? Okay, so, we're, so we want to put our Huckel numbers down here. So, so aromatic versus anti. Right, so we know six is, is aromatic because that's with benzene. And so we're just going to start going here. So eight, 10, 12, 14, 16 and oops 16 and so on but we can also do 4 and 2 yeah. so 2 4 6 8 10 12 12 14 16 and so on so on so on okay so for this first one right so we're going to do so there's each one of these carbons is part is part of a double bond so we're good on that so we're going to go 2 4 6 8 10. Again, having it above or below doesn't make a difference. 12. Okay. So 12 would say, oh, we're here. So that makes this one anti. Okay. So for this one, right, so we're going to have 2, 4, ah. We're going to take one of these 6, like 6, but the other ones we're just going to hide. Okay. And so this one's going to be aromatic. Now for this one, right? Ah, this is so these two carbons are part of a a um, part of a double bond, and this one has a charge, so that's okay. So all three of these carbons have have empty p orbitals, so that's good. All right, so for that, so we have two, and remember that's essentially a zero. Okay, aha, two means it's aromatic. So for that, so again, one of the crazier. Um, aromatic compounds. Now here, for this last one, right, so we have two, four, six, but the problem is this guy right here, okay, there's a CH2, so this is, there's no p orbital available. It's supposed to be a p, right? It's sp3 hybridized. All three of those p orbitals are, um, are hybridized. So with that, and so there's no free p orbital. So this would be considered non-aromatic, okay? Because the electrons would be would come in here, hit this, and then have to turn around and then come back. Okay, you can't. They can't go all the way around the ring because there's a um, there's a stop right here. Okay, so this would be considered non-aromatic. Okay. Oops. So you see this in. Um, in biology, so if you're looking at some of the proteins, right? So with that, so again, this is phenylalanine, right? Because CH two here, so that would be alanine if that was a CH three. So we're going to put a phenyl group on it, so it's phenylalanine, and so this would be con this molecule would be considered aromatic because it's a portion of it is aromatic. Same thing here, right? So tyrosine, it's a it's a phenol, right? Because it has a benzene here. This is tryptophan because it has this indole ring on it. So this is a um, aromatic, right? So, so it'd be 2, 4, 6, 8. Aha! We're going to count that. So it'd be 10, right? So that makes it aromatic. Okay. So that's good. You also see this with DNA, with the adenine and, and um, the, what is it? the purine and pyrimidine bases in here, right? These are all, if you count these up, right, they're going to be, it's going to make it so that they, um, they are aromatic. So these two for this one, they actually hide both of these, so it becomes two, four, six. Okay. For this one, what ends up happening is these get hidden, but this one we count. So two, four, six, eight, ten. So that's our that's the aromaticity there. You can also see this in heme systems. Okay, they are they they can go in here t in order to be able to make these conjugated systems. Um, so this is what the heme that carries the oxygen um, in your red blood cells. So 
also chlorophyll. Notice how um, closely the, the heme portion of the, um, of the chlorophyll molecule looks, the, uh, looks very, very similar. So, with that, so the, it, the main thing is, right, coming off of this carbon, right, you have this long sort of greasy tail that allows it to embed into the, into the cell wall of the plant. Okay, so, okay, good luck.